Listen to this. The world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. Everything is being lined up exactly what the Word of God says. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight, not by what I see and being fearful of that. I'm going to walk by faith and trust in God in that. Today, we are going to, uh, um, well, we're going to kind of continue on where we've been, looking at the life of John, the apostle, where we're we at. We'll talk about that. It's exciting. Oh. All right, Father, we love you a lot. Oh, Lord, we come away from just a broken world and for just a little while, Lord, to remember your faithfulness and your love. And Lord, just to hang out with your family. Someday, Lord, we get to run into your arms. Someday we're finally home. But until that day, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the things that we're learning. Lord, just keep us on track, Lord. Keep us on track with you. We love you a lot. We trust in you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. This has actually been fun, kind of tracking with the Apostle John for a while. Uh, John the Apostle, all the way from the early days when he first met Jesus. Tracked with him through the Gospels, through the years in the book of Acts. If you were here, we kind of went through his part that we find in the book of Acts. When the persecution hit through Saul of Tarsus, was kind of spearheading this persecution, John moved to Ephesus and we tracked with him there where he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And um, it's actually during that time he also wrote the Gospels. Uh, but then he gets arrested and that's kind of where we're at. We're, we're going to get him out to the island of Patmos. We are not going to teach the entire book of Revelation, but we're going to hit on some of the key stuff in it. We'll be a few weeks in it for sure. We just taught the book of Revelation, so you can go online and watch that. But uh, before we get him on the island, let's back up and freeze frame it when he got arrested. All right, a little history lesson, a little background on this. Because the more you study it, the more interesting it becomes, this time period of when he got arrested and what was going on in the church and the government and all that, to see what's going on today. In fact, it's, uh, you're, you're, you're fast-forwarding the time period past Nero, past the fires that happened in Rome. Everybody, everyone in Rome lost somebody that they loved. They lost their businesses. And, uh, and Nero, if you remember, Nero wanting to blame uh, somebody because it had gone that Nero was the one that set the fires. Think about, think about uh, Rome has got 14 sections in it. Ten of them burned to the ground. So most of Rome burned to the ground. Now, did, did, and a long story, and this is not our point, is did he have something to do with it? Not initially, but yes, later on he did. And you can look at the history of that, and that's another thing. But, uh, but he blamed the Christians. So there's always been this, this, at this time period, there's been this kind of thing against the Christians. You know, you guys, you Christians are all saying, hey, it's all going to burn. And it did. You're saying you're not of this world, you know. And so all the accusations were going on against the Christians. Many people, and I was going to read a kind of a, a long couple letters that we find during this time period, but it would take too much time. But some letters we find, they're wondering, why are we persecuting these people? They're good people. You know, we can't even explain why we're killing them like we're killing them, but the main population is doing that. Well, well, before that got too way out of hand, this guy right here is the emperor. We're in the 90s now. Domitian was the, was the emperor at this time now. We're, we're, we're getting now to the freeze frame to where, he, where John got arrested. He's the emperor um, and probably never did a mean tweet in his life, all right? Just saying, all right? not a mean tweeter. He's a guy that actually the, the general population liked him. Christians were really leery of him and rightly so of what happened next. But, uh, but what he did, what happened during his time was a huge earthquake happened and destroyed a lot of the cities, got really, really destroyed. You can still see the devastation. Some of the cities they never recovered. So they just, they just got buried. And when they're excavating, they know that was the earthquake that happened in the 90s. And so, but what he did was take some government money and begin to help the people. The people liked him because he's, he's helping uh, to rebuild their, their lives back after this earthquake and everybody liked him. Well, he looks like a nice guy. But here's the thing, in their culture, in their, in their whole deal was this, is that we're helping you, so you need to be loyal to us. You need to be loyal to the Roman Empire. Now, it's nothing that he did. Nero was doing this. Others were doing this before him. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to show that you're loyal to the government 
by everybody getting this shot. Wait a minute, not that one. But everybody getting, hello, okay? <laughs> by everyone, everyone doing, doing a, it's, and, and it's not a big deal. You're going to come to these altars that we have. This is the one that was in Ephesus. You're going to come to the altar and all you have to do is say, Caesar's Lord. It's very simple. That's it. That's all you have to say. All right, so this was what was going on in that time. The Apostle Paul, writing to those in Rome, he said this, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, not Caesar, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you will be saved. No, but it's not a big deal, Christian. Hey, you know, everyone's doing it. It's fine. A little pinch on the altar of incense, just saying, see, all you're doing is saying you're loyal to the government. I'm totally loyal to the government. Caesar is Lord. Now, you can have other lords if you want to believe in Jesus, you want to believe in whatever. It's okay. It doesn't matter. We believe in many gods. It really doesn't matter what you believe as long as you say, Jesus, as long as you say Caesar's Lord. But as a Christian, we have a problem with that, don't we? Jesus is Lord. There is no other God under heaven that we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So no, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Well, they begin to arrest the Christians. They begin to bring them in. But the false media of the day, hello, the media of the day was doing everything they could to, to blame every, if there was a, a, a localized famine, it's because of the Christians, because of their disobedience to the government and all that. And the earliest, one of the earliest pictures that we have, a graffiti of the cross, if you can see it very well, is this one right here. This is out of Rome. It's on the uh, Palatine Hill, okay, where all the rich people are at, right, up in Rome. This was there. You can't really see it here. And what it is, it's graffiti. It's the news of the day. It's saying, uh, Alexander Mundos is worshiping his God. And they have a donkey on a cross, all right, and this was what was being promoted out there over and over again, the kind of false news of the day. Everybody wanted to say, well, all the, all the woes that we have is because of the Republicans or because of or whatever, all the little blame game that's going on all over, all over the world today, all over, especially our world, you know. And here they're saying, well, it's the Christians that are doing it. But Christian, let me remind you of something. Okay, you freeze frame that of what was going on. Let me remind you of something of who we are. Jesus said this. He said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yeah, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world before the world, uh, therefore the world hates you. Remember the words that I said to you, Jesus speaking again. He says, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. And if they keep my word, they will keep yours also. Do not forget who you are. When the disciples marched out into this hostile world, there's so many people got saved. It was a huge revival. And there was a lot of concern in Rome at this time about all the Christians that were, that were sprouting up everywhere. So they were trying to stop the Christians. The, the, here here the, the apostles go out because they're told us to bring it to the entire world. As they begin to go out, every one of them hits hits a, a place of persecution. We know what happened to Judas. He committed suicide. We know what happened to, you know, James and John. We know what happened to James, the two sons of thunder. Remember those guys? We know what happened to James by Acts chapter 12. He was killed by the government, had killed him. We know what happened to Peter. Paul was in the same, uh, in the same prison with him in the Mabatine prison. I mentioned that earlier, but Mabatine prison. But Peter being crucified upside down, the reason was, is he says, I'm not, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. And they crucified him upside. Today, the Vatican stands directly over the horse track where he was crucified. That was the point of the Vatican being there. We're going to be right where his tomb is at. And the altar in St. Peter, uh, Peter's Basilica, the altar is over where his tomb was at. It's lower than there. And it's actually the tomb of Peter. They have the bones of Peter. And every once in a while, they'll bring those out. An interesting deal on that. But but here uh, being crucified upside down. But you go through the stories of these guys. You've got Andrew. Andrew was crucified on a cross that was an X. You know why? Because he led, this, he led this, uh, this governor, led this governor's wife to Christ. And he got so mad 
that he had him crucified on an X, on a cross that's an X. What they did is they, the, the governor had him put out on the beach. Okay, he was, this is in, in uh, modern day Greece today, but he put him on the beach. But the, the idea was this, is that if we crucify him out there by the nighttime, the wild dogs run that beach and they'll rip him off the cross and eat him. And so we'll get rid of him in one, in one time. The problem was for him was that he, he lived a couple days on the cross. People were coming from all over, listening to him preach from the cross. And a lot of people got saved. All right, so Andrew... Andrew, you got to go through the list. Doubting Thomas, remember him? He has run through a, with a spear by four soldiers as he was praying on his knees in Portugal. And, and Philip was stoned and crucified in Fergia. And Matthew was, was stabbed to death in Ethiopia. Bartholomew is an interesting Bartholomew here. You see, whenever you see these statues or these paintings of that of Bartholomew, if the disciples, there's always one that usually has a knife in his hand. And usually has a weird looking skin draped over his arm. You see the face right there because he was filleted alive. The, they, when they caught him, uh, he was in India and they beat him and clubbed him and then filleted him alive. Pretty heavy stuff. James, big James, was crucified in Egypt. Simon the Zealot was killed after refusing to worship the sun god in Persia, they say. And John, he's, he's the hero of our story. John was interesting because they were trying to kill. John was the last of them. These all, all these guys had gone to glory in, in the way that they did. And, and, uh, and John, they were trying to kill. All you have to do now is say Caesar's Lord. All you have to do is say you're loyal to the government. Little pinch of the, on the altar, that's all you have to do. Uh-uh. So they took him, tradition says they took him and tried to boil him in oil. Think about that. You ever seen like a restaurant, like a like a fast food restaurant where they got the oil they're, they're, they're with the french fries and all that. Think about sticking your hand in that. Think about your whole body in that. All right, so they tried to boil him in oil, tried to kill him. So what did he do? God wasn't done with him. Our times are in God's hands. You can't touch me unless God allows it. I'm property of Jesus. So are you if you're a child of God. And no, there wasn't nothing going to happen to him because the book of Revelation hadn't been written yet. There were still things for him to do. And so he's there, the little bubble's coming up. He's probably got his arms on the edge going, well, this is pretty cool. Can you turn up the heat? Turn up the bubbles a little bit, you know? Man, this is really good for my skin. I love the oil. Look at all it's doing, you know? Well, you, know, you see this. The, the, the question is now, when you, when you look at this time period right there, um, are we heading to that time period again? You know, I mean, you think about the government. The government is doing everything they can to turn... A turn the, the, the people against each other, especially against those, those narrow-minded uh, Christians, you know. We've got to stop them. Listen to this. This is out of, well, if you want to turn over there, 2 Timothy 3. Let me read this to you. Are we living in this time? This was Paul's last letter that he wrote in 2 Timothy and chapter 3. He's talking about the last days. He said, understand this, that in the, in the last days will come time. This is the ESV here. Will come times of difficulty. The um, King James, New King James, will say perilous times will come. Perilous times. It's an interesting word, and they're trying, to, they're trying to struggle on how to translate that word. In the last day, perilous times will come. In the last days, difficult times will come. In the last days, here, here's the idea, is that it's going to be a time where there's a feeling of there's no way out. There's no way out of what's going to come. That's, that's the idea of the phrase there. In the last days, there's going to be a feeling like there's no way out of this. You ever watch the news and think that there, there's one way out? His name is Jesus. But have we gone so far down the road in insanity that there is no way out? You know, will our kids never know a time when there was peace in America? Well, Pastor, was there ever peace in America? Yeah, how, how old are you? Do you remember when, when you were really proud of our government? Do you ever remember when you were proud of our president? Remember those days? Okay, well, I'm still living there, Pastor. Okay, well, that's okay. We still love you. You know, God bless you. Okay, I'm not going to be smart, too, too much of a smart aleck here, but um, boy, self-control is, is in my strong suit here. 
The people are going to be this. The last days, are par- there's no way out of this. He says, this is what they're going to be like. This is what the, the atmosphere of the time is going to be. First thing is this, they're going to be lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves, self-absorbed, all about what do I get out of this? You've offended me, all right? You offend me, big offended gen- generation. We're going to be lovers of ourselves. We're going to be lovers of money, you know? If you just give me enough money, I'll vote for you, you know? We'll pay your student loans and, hey, just remember us when you go vote. Don't worry about what's doing to the country. We're going to help you out. Don't write me and say you don't agree with me. It's, I'll just, never mind. Because <laughs> the next word that would get me is the word proud. In the last days, they're going to be proud. They're going to be arrogant. They're going to be abusive. They're going to be disobedient to parents. Think about that. Have you ever just stopped and watched the cartoons that are supposed to be for kids these days? Wow. And you would let your kid watch that garbage that's out there? It's so much perverted garbage. What is going on with Disney? Why would you go in that direction? Why would you try to teach our children things that are so perverse and think it's okay? What is wrong with our country? What is wrong with our world? You know what it is? We're lost. We need Jesus. He's coming back. They're going to be, they're going to be disobedient to parents. Look what we're feeding them. Look what's going on. Look what's being taught right now. They're going to be ungrateful and unholy. They're going to be heartless, unpleasable. They're going to be slanderous without self-control. They're going to be brutal. They're not going to be loving good. Not loving good. Despisers of good is some of your translations there in verse 3. They're going to be treacherous and reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, the power to change lives, the power to help people, denying the power of God. In the last days, perilous times are going to come. Hmm. The Bible does tell us about these days. The Bible does tell us, freeze frame what John is going through. I look at that and the closer I look at it, the more I see, boy, we're heading there. We're already, we're already going there full steam, right? Things don't change very much. But here's the thing. The Bible does talk about how we're to live and what we're supposed to be doing. The Bible does give us a lot of, this is what's going on in the end times. This is who you should be. Let me give you just a few of these. This is helpful to us. This is something we talked a lot about because John talks a lot about it. First one is this, the last days we will, we are to live in love. All right. Well, we talk a lot about that because John said it, but I want you to think about what that really means. You're really going to love. You're going to love people that are unlovely. The Bible says that in the last days, Matthew 24, lawlessness will increase, lawless, watch the news, lawlessness will increase and the love of many will grow cold. And you see that. You see that. And, and you, it, it's hard not to get cynical sometimes. I absolutely am a firm believer of this. Find some friends and grow old together. But not everybody that goes to church is going to be your friend. You know, I expect, and I'm not going to say too much here, but except to say that I, I expect the world to be... Um, to be unkind and and I expect that from the world, you know, and and uh, and I can re- I can I can understand that I can I can reach out to that I can love that I can have friends I can do all of that with the world, but when it comes in the church and you got people that are that are nasty and cutting and and want to tell you how you're doing such a horrible job, pastor, and all these things, you know, um, you know, it gets a little. It, it's hard not to get a little on edge on some of that stuff. I have said this more than once. I got to tell you this, right? Can I confess this to you? It'll save me money in therapy. Help me out here, right? And my, my therapist said they can't keep sharing this stuff. But is this, is that I've said this actually just recently. I said, look, if that's Christianity, I don't want to be a Christian. And I always know, I always know the answer to that. That's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. The more I get into the, the critical you know, looking down on others, you're not doing it right. I don't like you, pastor, because you're not doing it right. I don't like that Bible teacher. I don't like that person because they're not doing it my way. The, the, The further you get there, I look around and Jesus is nowhere around. And I gotta tell you this straight up. The people that are coming here for help on these Thursday nights, 
They don't give a rip about your religion. They really don't. They don't care about your theology. They don't care about your doctrine. They want to deal with their children that are, that are they're wondering how they're going to feed their kids. They want to know how to reach out to those around them that are, that are broken and hurting. And they're scared to death right now. And us Christians get on our little hobby horse and say, well, you know, here we are. We got the right thing. How about this? His name is Jesus. That's our, that, that is what we've got. This, I have nothing else. His name is Jesus. He saved my life. He forgave me. He gave me hope. He gave me love. He forgives me when I mess up. He walks me through, with me through this journey. His name is Jesus. I have nothing else. And I feel like sometimes in the church, I got to protect people from church people. It's like, stay away from them. Stay away from them. My friends are trying to find their way to Jesus. They're trying to find their way there. You made your way there one day, you know, so... Well, we love like we love some of you too. All right, so, you know, so. <laughs> that's a hard. Listen, this is the hard. This is what I'm talking about. This is what's hard. Did we not? I had to sing it to you so we'd get it. Beloved, let us love one another. Remember that out of First John when we were there. So 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 pause that, and we already did this. It's it was so convicting. I, what am I doing? Why am I doing it again? But as you pause and think about, let us love one another because love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. All right. So you start thinking about that. Do I love everyone? No. So how do you deal with that? You, his name is Jesus. Lord, you got to help me with this. I like these people. These people I tolerate. These people I walk around. And these people, I'd like the throat punch. All right, so <laughs> praise God, it's a big group, little group, little group, little group, and just two of you in this room. All right, so <laughs> that's it. All right, so here's, here's the Lord help me. Last days, here's the first thing is, that I gotta keep moving, that we, we, are, we are called to love. Lord, help us to do that. And don't just say, well, that's a Christian thing that we say. Pause that and take it to prayer and ask the Lord, Lord, am I doing that? Am I loving the way that you've called me to love? Okay. And if you're doing really good, you say, yes, I'm doing perfect. I love everybody. Then I want to say, man, God bless you. Your medication is working. All right. So here's the next thing is this, is that uh, we're going to live by faith and not by sight. Now we talk about that a lot. Okay. Second Corinthians five, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But again, slow that down. We walk by faith not by what we're seeing in this world, not by what God's got this. God's got this. Scoffers will come in the last day with their scoffing, says in Second Peter. Matthew, uh, many false prophets will, go, will arise and lead many astray. Many false prophets, all right? News media, false news that's out there. Many false, pro- Fauci, all right? <laughs> many false prophets will be out there, all right? I just love this, man. I can really feel I'm irritating people today. This is awesome. This is awesome. Okay. There'll be, there'll be earthquakes in various places. There's going to be famines and pestilence, epidemic contagious diseases, pestilence. There'll be, there'll, there'll be terrors and great signs in the heavens. In Revelation, it says no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have this economic mark. Isn't it so smart? Let's get, on a, let's get on a cryptocurrency that everybody has to have and the government can control it. We'll know exactly what you're buying. We'll know exactly how to control you a lot more. Cryptocurrency, that's in your future. Oh, by the way, you got this little card. That's cool. The card's great, but you can lose the card. How about let's just put a little chip right there? A little, really simple. Put a little chip right there and it's just, you won't be able to buy or sell without that chip and it's going to help because you don't, Geez, if you, if you go into a grocery store and pull out a severed head or hand out of your pocket, we'll know it's not yours. You stole that identity, all right? It makes a lot of sense. And so are we not, are we not moving? Is it like a train out of control? Heading, remember trains? Boop, boop. Okay, remember trains heading out of control, off the tracks. Where's this thing going? I'll tell you where it's going. Book of Revelation. We're going to talk about that in the, in the weeks to come. It, I mean, so much. I, I won't read all these many... Uh, they'll run to and fro. I mean, you could be, uh, you could be here this morning, and you could be in Israel by, you know, in a few hours. You know, f- you know, fifteen hours you can be in Israel. Um, knowledge will increase. You know, walk by faith and not by sight. 
I'm looking at what goes on, and there can, be a, there can be a tinge in our hearts of fear. God's not the author of fear. God's got this. I heard somebody say this, and I wrote it down. I love it. Uh, and I've, I've said this a lot. I wish I had said it, but now that I've said it a few times, I'm going to claim it as my own, is this, is the world is not falling apart. It's what? Do you know this? It's falling into place. Some of you have heard me say that. See? Okay. Listen to this. The world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. Everything is being lined up exactly what the Word of God says. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight, not by what I see and being fearful of that. I'm going to walk by faith and trust in God in that. Here's the third thing is this, is that, is that we're going to live knowing God's Word. Verse by verse, line by line. The enemy, the enemy is going to really be able to, to tweak the church if he can take the Word of God out of your hands. The Bible says this, now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Did you hear that? In the last days, in the last days, we're living in the last times, people are going to depart from the faith. By they're, going to, they're going to be devoted to demons, teaching of demons. They're going to be devoted to the wrong thing. The Bible says... Um, do your best to present yourself to God as a workman who needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're to be someone that knows the word of God. That's why I'm a stickler about Bible. Verse by verse, line by line, Genesis to Revelation, what does this word of God say? What does it say? Spend some time in it. It's okay. This is a great place to start if you're in a place where you say, well, well, I, I don't know that I trust the Bible. Okay. I, I don't mind questions like that. I actually like questions like that if you're an honest person. Not if you're dishonest or you're lazy, then that's just lazy, all right? But you're going to say, you know, I don't know if I can trust the Bible. Well, great. That's a good place to start. Now, start doing your, start doing your research. Disprove it. Go after the Bible. Go after the Bible, Lee Strobel. Go after the resurrection of Jesus. Look what happens. God got radically saved. Case for Christ. Even made it into a movie. Uh, go, who is it? That, uh, more than a carpenter. Josh McDowell. Josh, go after this thing. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in the historical Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. Go after it. The book More Than a Carpenter is his story. Where he, as he going after this, very intelligent people going out, I'm going to disprove honest people. I'm going to disprove Jesus. I'm going to disprove the Bible. The more you dig into this thing, the more you see God's got this thing. The, the Word of God is the Word. Of, it is the Word of God. You know, and the more you say amen to that. Amen. Two people are excited about that. All right, so good. So, yes, yeah, good. <laughs> So we're going to devote ourselves to the Word of God. And, I, and I'm going to encourage you. Uh, you're in a safe place here to learn, right? So, it, so I know people come at this thing, which I did. I came at this going, if this is God's Word, then I'm going to, I'm going to spend my life learning about it. If it is not God's Word, I'm going to spend my life coming after you Christians. I'm not going to stand on the fence. I'm either going to be your worst enemy or I'm going to be with you. Hello, I'm with you, all right? Because the more you study this thing, the more it comes alive. Here's, a, here's the next thing is that basic, we need to devote ourselves to prayer. Talk to God. Talk to Him. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that, that will come to pass and, and to stand before the Son of Man. Notice that. A couple more of these are going to walk in the light. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world. This is John chapter 3, verse 19. And the men loved, agape love, sold out love. Men loved darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. And then 1 John 1 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all of our sins. If you walk in the light, think about that. If you walk in the light, when you walk in a light, everything's exposed. Everything is there. Everything is open. Now, I don't know this for a fact. I think some of you, uh, some of you have told me about it. I wouldn't find myself in a place like this. But, uh, but bar rooms are dark for a reason. Think about it, all right? Why are they so dark? Because then you'll see who you're dancing with, all right? Don't turn up the lights. Well, the thing is this, and I, not, now, I don't know that by experience. You guys know, all right? Just saying. Some of you told me that, and I, I know it's confidential, so I didn't point you out. But, but uh, but as we walk in the light, think about this. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, what does that mean? Walking, our lifestyle, what we do, totally open to God. Every aspect of our life open to God. And the thing is this, 
It's a safe place to be. God, help me in this. I'm struggling with this. This is something I'm having a hard time letting go of. Lord, help me with this. And, and if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. He's helping us. He's walking with us through this. And his blood, what he did upon that cross, and his continuing love for us cleanses us from all of our sins. I love that. Thank you, God, for walking with us in the light because you knew what you were getting. Sometimes we feel dirty. Sometimes we feel broken. But he walks with us in this, in this journey. Thank you, God, for that. One more thing. Ah, two more things. Is this, is we need to keep, keep watching. Therefore, stay awake, Matthew 24. For you do not know the day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the, the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. The Son of Man is coming in an hour that you don't expect. Every day, are you ready? What if this was your last day? You know? Is he going to come for us? I'm going to talk about the rapture coming up. It's in a, it's in a few weeks, but, but uh, what if the rapture is in a few weeks? Get ready, all right? <laughs> or, or I'll talk about it in a few weeks. You can, you can phrase that. Wouldn't that be awesome? All right? But, uh, or is he going to, or I mean, look around in this room. Is he going to pick us off one by one? Some of you, it's, you know, you're going to be there pretty soon. It's just, it is what it is. Um, what if... Living every day like today's the day. Making sure every day counts. Making sure every day is the day that, Lord, I want to be found faithful. You know, show me what I need to be doing. Don't let me leave. And I learned this a long time ago. I don't want anything hanging out there because, you know, I had a good friend. I told you these stories. But I had a good friend that I was mad at him. He's a real good friend. I love the guy. But me and him got in a big old fight. And, uh, I got a big, and, and he died. How rude was that? He died on me without us fixing it. You know, I was mad at him for dying. What'd you die for? You know, we didn't fix it. We would have fixed it if it had been long enough, but you died. That's just rude. You did that despite me, didn't you? Okay. <laughs> Can't wait to see him in heaven because, you know, that's all dumb stuff. I don't want, it, it taught me that, I remember that when that happened. It, it taught me, I don't want anything hanging out there. If there's things I can fix, as, as much as depends with you, live peaceably with all men, the Bible says. And so do what you can. If you got things you need to fix, fix it. You don't know how much time you have left. You don't know how much time they have left. You know, the Lord's coming back. In the last days, we're to live in love. Last days, we are to live by faith and not by sight. In the last days, we're to, we're to live knowing God's word. In the last days, we're to live devoted to prayer, walking in the light, keeping watch. Here's the last one we're going to quit, is living for Jesus by helping others. Matthew 24 says, and this gospel of the kingdom, after he gives a whole list, Matthew 24, there's going to be earthquakes and pestilence and, and all these things, and people turn against each other, uh, you know, ethnic group against ethnic group, and all this that's going to go on, and as he goes through this entire dark list of things that are going to happen, and then he says this in Matthew 24, verse 14, he says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. The word, of, the word of God is going to go out. Occupy till I come, he said in Matthew, in, excuse me, in Luke chapter 19. Occupy until I come. What are we to be doing? So we can, we can talk about how bad it is out there in the world and how things are going. Um, you know, you ought to be aware of it, but how does that, how does that help you in what God's called us to do? I, I would choose to say this. Let's focus on the cool things that God's doing right now. God is moving. God is helping people. People's lives are being changed. People's lives are, 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 are people that have been, uh, have been away from God are coming to God. The prodigals are coming home. God is doing a work. I love seeing what he's doing. So what should we be about? Oh, let's just, get, just do everything we can to curse this government, curse the darkness, curse all that's going on, or curse the, the, the new government that'll come in, whatever it is. I'm just going to curse all the stuff that I see. Or am I going to say this, God, you give us an opportunity. You told us to occupy until you come. You say the gospel is going to continue to go out. Lord, I'm going to focus on that. That is where I'm going. That's what I'm doing. I'm not going to focus on who's doing what and who's not doing the things I think they should be doing. That's none of my business. My business is this. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. He has helped me. He can help you. He has loved me. 
He loves you. He has, he has forgiven me. He will forgive you. All you need to do is come to him. That's our message. Our message is not live up to the expectations or you're not going to be right before God. No, that, that draws us away from God. And again, what I said earlier is true. If that's Christianity, I don't want no part of it. You know, as I got older, it's like, I'm not putting up with this stuff anymore. You want to act like that? Go act like that someplace else. You want to say we're not living up to God's expectation? Well, I, I agree with you. Help us. There's so much to be done. Listen, the harvest is so plentiful, but the laborers are few and we're tired and we're irritated. It's you, you guys that are sitting there in the, in the, on the outskirts trying to tell us how to do it. All right, we'll get in here and do it with us. Otherwise, shut your face, all right, in Jesus' name. And it's as much love as I can say, you know, shut your face, all right? And if you write me and tell me that I was mean to you, I'll disagree with you. I was, and I don't like you because I talked about the people that I love or the people I don't like. You just moved into one of those other categories, all right? So. <laughs> We're going to be home pretty soon. This is all going to melt away like a dream and we're going to be in his presence. But while we're here, should we not do all that we can to follow God and see where he leads us, see what what he has us doing and helping as many people look around. This world has gone insane. There's a bunch of crazy people out there and they're running the country, all right? They're completely insane, all right? And if you think they're they're normal, wow, okay. That's uh, that's CBD oil is really helping you, all right? So I'm just saying... (laughs) But, uh, but I'm saying this, is that it, it, it tells us it's going to happen that way. The Bible said this is what's going to happen. Why are we shocked? Why are we even cursing it? Why not use this time for the day? Redeem the times for the days are evil. Lord, help us in that. Help us in that. Let's do this together, though. Let's do this together, right? Turn off the news. Join us on Thursday. Join us on... It does, don't just come here. There's all kinds of places. Say, Pastor, I really can't come Thursday, but I really want to help. But come talk to me. I will load you up with clothes and food and diapers and that, and you can go through your neighborhood and tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. You got some neighbors that need some help, you go talk to them. You go help them. Help them in their physical need. Jesus did that. Help them in their physical need so you, so you, earn, you earn respect enough to talk to them. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Don't tell them about your church. Your pastor's a weirdo, all right? Okay, don't agree with that. But... Uh, <laughs> But let me say this, but, but Jesus is not. Jesus is not. Let's, let's, let's do all that we can. It's, it's, since we started this church, it's all about Jesus. It'll be that way until we're done. It's all about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you a lot. We love you a lot. And Lord, as we ramble through this, Lord, we, we, did, we got not even one line in the book of Revelation that we were trying to get to. But Lord, we did get to what we need to be doing right now. Lord, help us to love, help us to help each other, help us to pray and be in your word and all the things that we talked about, Lord. And we need you, Jesus. We need you. Someday, Lord, we're going to be home. We're going to run into your arms. We long for that day. But until that day, Lord, help us to be found faithful. You know each person in this room, Lord. You know those that are struggling. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd meet us in this place, even now. You're not sure where you're at with God. He loves you a lot. Or maybe it's time to come home or get whatever it is. Maybe it's some, it's, it's to get serious with what God's called you to, or I don't know. That's between you and God. But in the quietness of this moment between you and God right now, God, search me. Are there things I need to work on? Is there something I need to do? Is there someone I need to call? Is there someone I need to forgive? Is there something I need to surrender? Lord, I give you my life. Help me to follow you. Between you and God right now, you talk to him. He's here. He loves you. He loves you. For some, maybe for the very first time, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord, help me to follow you. Show me what that looks like. I receive you as Lord and Savior. You put that in your own words. He's here. And God, you're so faithful to us, and we love you so much. Thank you for this family. Always, please, Lord, always make this a safe place for people to come and learn about you. Don't ever let us, through our religiosity, hurt one another. Help us to love. Help us to love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand together.